there's someone pushing these things. There's a reason that the Chinese are setting up police stations all over their uh, our country. I mean, who's behind? Wait a this? second, I haven't heard. No, that one. I've not. I haven't heard. Tell me. Tell me everything about that one. I have heard. Do you? Are you familiar with the Epoch Times? Epoch Times, yes. Okay, absolutely. I have read that in there that the Chinese are opening up police stations throughout our country. You have not heard about that. Hey, Forgiato. What's up, my dog? Again, you? Again. You gonna try to riz me again? What's up? It's the Riz King. I love <laughs> left me, media. Tell me, tell me why Trump is innocent. Hmm, you gonna change my words? What we gonna do? Trump's innocent, man. The reason why they pushing Trump so hard is because if Trump doesn't go to jail, they go to jail. They don't want him in this race. They want him off this ballot. He's the president of the United States or a former president of the United States. He doesn't need to get a mug shot. He doesn't need to be handcuffed. All these indictments are backfiring. They're not gonna help him because you don't like Donald Trump, I like Donald Trump. But at the end of the day, there's people who play 50-50 don't really know, and this in here is making them say this is taking it way too far. Even you, my man, like you had to have more money when Trump was in. The economy's much better now, right? Economy, With Donald Trump. Economy's better? With Donald Trump. Then now, Donald Trump has helped so many people become who they are. Like you, you gotta go undercover as someone who likes Donald Trump to give views. Not all of us can get an inheritance from our I dad. I know, from daddy, for auto trader, right? Yeah, I mean, which, I, I, which I love anybody to show me where I got any money from anybody in my family. Never received an inheritance. Oh, I don't yeah. know what inheritance I could have got. Besides but you got know what? Inheritance. I got six Rolls Royces on my own. Supporting Donald Trump, I got brand new cars, Tahoes, Trump trucks, billboards, money, because you know what? I get up every day and chase my dreams in this world that Donald Trump let us do that and fight for freedom. The thing that people joke about is your whole born to ride Donald Trump. Born to ride 45, that's the gang. Yeah. That's the gang. We out here putting on for Trump. Do, 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 do you like putting on for Trump. Them people out here putting on for Trump. That's funny though. It's funny. I don't think it's, it's funny. It's funny. It's so funny. Dude, it's I don't so think it's funny. Born to ride Donald Trump. I don't think that's funny. You're trying to riz me. This man got some riz challenge. I know, but it's funny. That's the riz it's challenge. Funny. It's, it's, come on. Let's if you, go to the next one. No, you but got if that you, one. But listen. Next if, one, next. If you but just you agreed that, this, that you were doing comedy, I'd be like, yo, I'm going to bow to you as the king of comedy because that's it's the funniest It's born to thing. ride 445, not born to ride 45. Because the way it says. Uh -huh. Born to ride 45. Make sure you get I've these seen her white every supremacists. Day. Uh, you're Vietnamese, right? I've been to probably 20 to 30 rallies. I've seen you at everything. Every single time. rally Actually, in the world. Actually, I don't think I've been to a rally that I haven't seen you. America, America, the greatest show on earth. Stop right up, stop right up. We got peanuts for all. We got peanuts. The greatest circus in the world. The world looks at America as a circus. Well, I bring the circus to America. What work are you in? Uh, I'm not. I'm not a network. I'm oh. a private citizen. Oh wait. Oh, and uh, we just applied for the arrest of Fannie Willis and Madison. Oh wait. Can I? Can you hold that up to the yeah, camera? Yeah. We're outside of the Fulton County Courthouse right now. I just came from uh, the Magistrate Court of Fulton County, where we applied for the arrest of Fannie Willis. Uh, the indictment has four charges. Uh, there's two under the state law and two under the federal law. The two under the state law relate to the conduct of public officials and they are violation of oath of office and unprofessional conduct by public officers and employees. And the two charges under the U.S. Code are conspiracy against rights and deprivation of rights under color of law. This is a direct attack on Trump's ability to win the election in 2024. And so those are violations uh, against her oath of office. I actually have been a candidate for office at uh, State House up in Rome, Georgia, which is known Fantastic. to most of America as Marjorie Taylor Greenville. So she lives about four have miles you met her? So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You talk, you, you, so you see her all the time? Yeah, pretty regularly, actually. Okay. Yeah. What's she like? Uh, I think Marjorie is uh, a lot more intelligent uh, than anyone gives her credit for. It's the same with Trump. They say, uh, you know, Trump is dumb. And Marjorie in particular is really great at just walking into a situation or room and immediately figuring out what the, what the fix is, like what's going on. Yeah. And really sharp at that. In fact, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, that's yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Where are they? Where is Build Back Better? Six, six, six. That's a sign mm. of the devil, President Obama. Get your hands off the of me. Market. Get your hands off my brothers and sisters. They are devil worshippers, right, Rihanna? 
Are we a devil worshiper at the Super Bowl Sunday halftime show with the weekend? I am homeless in heels working for President Trump on my dime and my time across this country since 2015. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. You liberals that are out there, they have my balls in a vice. President Obama is married to a man. Mike Obama's private parts are bigger than a family-sized can of right guard. Why do you think they killed my sister, Joan Rivers? Why did John Johnson try to kill me? That's me. I used to be a nice girl, went to finish school. Are you doing school. great? Are you a comedian? No, I'm not. I'm a domestic not, violence survivor. I'm a whistleblower. A I'm here to support Trump. So we're here to support our president. I have supported our president since he came down that escalator with his beautiful wife. Get over here, girl. You get over here. Abby. This is my sister in Christ, Abby. President Donald John. Trump is going in cuffs today to expose the judicial system. He ain't going in cuffs. Why is he so stupid? You think, stupid, you think liberals stupid, are in a cult? Liberals are in a cult. Yes, we are here because Trump is guilty. Lock him up a tour with the key. <laughs> Trump indicted. Again and again and again. Uh, and again and again and again. I made it. You made that shit. I made it, yeah. yeah. Explain why you think uh, Donald Trump is guilty. We saw him on national television telling um, that guy from Georgia, the Secretary of State from Georgia, all I need is 11,780 11, votes, one yeah. more. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, that was the crime. Yeah. Lock him up. He was, they were just talking, so it's like it's illegal to just talk about finding 11,780 <laughs> votes. I feel like that's like freedom of speech. It's like a First Amendment. It's a first, no, not yeah. in, no, not when you want to overthrow when they want to overthrow the government and um, steal the votes of black and brown people. Because that's yeah. what he wanted to do. In uh, what here. are you talking about? People have been doing that for years. Yeah, but he was doing it bold face though. They be, they've been doing it on the on the DL, you know, at least trying to do it on the DL. But he he doesn't care. Detroit, you know, anywhere there are black people, that's where he th that he, the way he thinks that vote of fraud is taking place. He didn't question when the vote in the areas where he won, which is like white people who voted for him, he didn't question those. He questioned where there are a lot of black and brown people. With the four horsemen of the apocalypse, we have changed it from conquest, war, famine, and debt. We have changed it to white supremacy, patriarchy, capitalism, and complacency. Because complacency is what is going to cause the, the death. Complacency. Yeah, the death of Otherwise known as neoliberalism. I don't know what is known as. I just know that people not participating, and when we don't participate, people like Trump and Eastman, and they're trying to steal our democracy is yeah. what we get. Yeah, I mean, so you're just as concerned as most Americans about the militarization and the weaponization of law enforcement. Definitely, I think that's the, I think that's the number one issue. I saw recently something that said that the FBI had shot four people dead in their possibly in their own homes in the last month or so it was one gentleman he had said some negative things about biden on the internet they came to his house well, and just, they shot him dead i don't know i mean i i kind of want to see the whole video well i don't think there is a video the cops they were probably like you know fearing for their lives they came to his house yeah early in the morning but he doesn't know what's going on they bust into his house with automatic weapons what, what's he gonna do well he's just gonna go reach for his gun he doesn't know who's coming into his home you can imagine the police just showing up to your house and executing you like in yeah, no knock warrant it should never be like that what do you think about cop city well cop city is a training ground for the police officers here right okay so what's the controversy with there i don't know well, it seems like a militarization it's 100 acres it's it's you can it can simulate urban warfare it just seems like a militarization to me well i don't have a problem with that i think our our police need to be prepared especially after the uh, the riots and the looting, the burning, everything, all these kind of things that we've had over the last few years. They need to be prepared for all kinds of situations. It's totally, totally different, yeah. Totally Just different like, than the militarization. That's different than attacking people. A lot of talk about the weaponization of law enforcement. Yes. DOJ, the FBI, IRS, CIA. What do you think should be done about the weaponization of law enforcement? Well, the only thing that really can be done is to clear them out, clear everyone out, especially at the top. I don't think it's the rank and file that are that corrupt. I think it's the ones in leadership. And I think that the corruption is so deep and so entrenched in these organizations that they really have to be 
totally destroyed. And of course, we know Kennedy said that he was going to do that with the CIA. And, Before he died. And we saw what happened with him. They put a bullet in his head. Dangerous venture to go against these people. They're going to destroy you, and we see what they're doing to Trump. It's almost like an abolishing. You have to destroy and rebuild these institutions because their foundation is just too rotten. Exactly, exactly. I sound like a liberal when I talk like this. When I talk about this, you know, like, because they talk about abolishing these institutions and they... They the police. Well, because it's like they're basically saying you can't reform these institutions. They're just so corrupt. You need to destroy and rebuild. I think that we're far past conservative and, and liberal. I mean, those are what they, the labels they want to put on us to divide us. But the truth is, we're far past that at this point. We're far past Republican and Democrat, conservative, liberal. We're, we're way past that. We're, we're down to uh, evil versus good at this point. You actually have a good point about this. Should we, as conservatives, start marching with these progressives that are, you know, marching and protesting against the police? Like Cop City, great example. Is that like a weaponization of law enforcement? Cop City. I'm not familiar with Cop City. In Atlanta, they're building a military yes. Yes. a military facility. It's uh, like 100 acres, yes. millions of taxpayer dollars, and it's like a military, it's militarizing yes. the police force of Atlanta. But, but I think the better question to ask is who's behind that? The taxpayers may be funding it, but who's behind that? There's someone pushing these things. There's a reason that the Chinese are setting up police stations all over their our country. I mean, who's behind that? Wait a second, I haven't heard. No, that one have not, I haven't heard. Tell me tell me everything about that one. I have heard. Do you, Are you familiar with the Epoch Times? Epoch Times, yes, Okay, absolutely. I have read that in there, that the Chinese are opening up police stations throughout our country. You have not heard about that? I didn't know that the Chinese Communist Party was setting up police stations throughout the United States. Yes, and they're also funding our colleges and universities. Okay. You do know about that, right? Well, the Penn State thing, for sure. Oh, but it's even farther than that. I mean, it, they are everywhere in this country. But see, this is so you're what saying like this, if you look further into Cop City, you'll find that this is a CCP Maybe. plot. I'm yeah, but I'm, I'm saying, you're not saying an absolute, you're saying it's, you know, it, if they're setting up. question to ask, yeah. who is behind this? What is the impetus I behind it? was just training, and then it was all of these other things, people that, that were trying to tear it down, all the homeless people that were living in there. Tear, am I, are we talking about the same thing? Yeah. I don't mind our police being trained well, though. I don't have a problem with that. Again, you do always have to follow the money. You all, I always do that. You always exactly. have to ask, yeah, who is sure. behind this? What's the impetus behind this? I just think so that's a wise question to ask. A lot of us obviously are upset about the weaponization of law enforcement. Sure. And in fact, uh, I'm actually a defendant in another weaponization of law enforcement case in Georgia, uh, which is the Rome 4 case up in Rome, which involves uh, the police of Rome um, suppressing and arresting protesters at the Trans Queer Pride for Kids event. This case is particularly important and close to me as someone who has been a victim of the politicization of law enforcement. Yeah. You know, I've seen it's pictures 100 of... 100-acre training facility. Right? right. And it just seems to me like militarization. And of I mean, the militarization of law enforcement, I think, is a valid concern, and it's actually something that you actually hear from both more of the libertarian right as, as well as people on the left. So that's actually true. So it's something that actually people can come together on. There's actually a lot if people would not would not be drawn into the bitterness of partisanship that actually people could agree on. What do you think about the weaponization of law enforcement? It's disgusting, uh, deplorable. What do you think is a solution to this weaponization of the DOJ, it's IRS? Be cleaned out. It's got to be, we need leaders that um, care enough and are strong enough to uh, clean up the mess that it's become. Yeah. What about Cop City? I don't know much about Cop City. 100 acres. Oh, where it. all the Antifas were uh, assaulting the cops? I did see that. That's right. Yeah. Is that in line with militarization and weaponization of law enforcement? Uh, the protest to it or Cop City itself? Cop, the Cop City itself. Yeah, I think they need a training ground to train the cops. That's, that's my understanding of why they're building that facility. So. Did you know 
Now, did you know that recently uh, there has been, uh, Fulton County Jail is being sued. They let a mentally challenged man die, and he died from bed bugs. And his cell was completely filthy, fecal matter, broken glass. And this jail right here, so that's why they wanted to do it here at this jail. They would love to see Donald Trump in this nasty, and it's uh, it's famous all over America for being a very um, vicious jail to be in, a nasty jail. One of the people in the Republican debates, Vivek Ramaswamy, he's talking about how we should raise the voting age to 24 and demand that voters pass a civics test. Yes, I would agree with that. You so know. you think in 24 is an appropriate age to start voting? I would think so. I think 18 is fine. I do like the civics test. I don't know if I would necessarily make it a requirement. There's elected officials that have never taken a civics class. Hard to believe. There's people as members of the United States Senate. They've never taken a class in civics. Mm -hmm. Congress. Mm -hmm. Federal, you know, United States Congress. Interesting idea. I don't think it'll ever pass, but it's an interesting idea. Yeah. I mean, I support Vivek. I, yeah. me I met him. Great guy, personally. Came over, shook his hand, talked with him for 10 minutes. Great guy. I'm good with the civics test, but no. If you can go to war at 18, you need to get to, you should be able to vote at 18. I agree, but I do think a civics test might be a good idea. I think everybody should have to take a civics test. And especially immigrants coming here should have to take a couple of classes for sure. Did you, you guys heard of Vivek Ramaswamy? Oh yeah. yeah. Well, he worships a Hindu god, and at the top of this nation, just like Obama was a closet homosexual, we don't want a Hindu god worshiper running our nation. Bottom line, he's oh. a Hindu. Okay. So I thought I thought we liked Vivek. I don't. Oh okay. No, I don't. Oh okay. I'm sorry. No, he don't like Israel. He just went to Wikipedia. And there may be criminal charges against him. He paid to have things removed the day before he announced his presidency. One of the main things he had removed was his Hindu faith. But number two, that he was best friends with the creator of the mRNA vaccine and called that man his mentor. All that's now gone. Because he's, well, he, he made his money in pharma, in big pharma. True, M mRNA. Why would you go scrub that from your Wikipedia? He is our Obama. Slick, smooth the best talker up there. But once once it's all over with, you'll see that he's not a true conservative. There's a lot about him that needs to come out. There's only one man in this race. I think a civics test sounds like a great idea. Yes, yes civics test would be a great idea. I might roll it all the way back and say, you have to own property to vote. Yes, <laughs> just like the founding fathers. No, that's a great idea. Oh my God, it's just the founding fathers. It was like property owners. It was, yeah. That, you know, really, really, don't take our freedoms for granted. Freedom's not free. How old are you? I'm 19. You like him. You've met him. At first, I was against it. I was like, I think this is a horrible idea. Until I sat back and I really th I thought about it a lot. I believe that it's a good move. I think that while it may make it harder for some to vote, you have to take a test to drive What's a 24? You're 19. You won't get to vote. I'll take the test, and then I can vote. So the people that can't pass a civics test have to wait till they're 24? Yes. It's the same concept with a license. You have to pass a test, an exam, and if you fail it, you don't get to drive. And I feel like a vote is influential as driving a car. You can kill somebody in a car. If you have a leader up there in office that doesn't know what they're doing, a lot of people have died from fentanyl and everything like that. You know, the Founding Fathers actually had a very restrictive right to vote, and they, they in their writing, repeatedly said that that's necessary to preserve a Republican form of government. And so we've had an experiment over the last 50 to 100 years of maximizing voter turnout, um, you know, and has that made the government better or worse? Back then it was just wealth, it was landowners, and right. they would they would originally, pick the yes. president. Yeah. Right. Well, actually, I mean, originally the states picked the president. There was no popular vote for president. And so the original design of the founders was to have the states have their ambassadors in Washington, AKA the senators, and the states to pick the president. So that the president was not chasing after the votes directly of people and then promising programs, gifts, et cetera. We apparently thought we knew better than the founding fathers. And yeah. I'm not sure that we did. He wants to institute a civics test to vote. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, it's your, yeah. Now I've seen they wanted to bring the age down to 16 because they're hoping some of the propaganda they have in school now will help them get some more votes. I heard 
It was talk of dropping the voting age. That's the first I heard of someone wanting to raise it. This is crap. You trying to get my words to change. They ain't going to change, my brother. So you'll, you'll still vote for him even if he's convicted? I'll write his name in. Only they can get Trump is sedition charge. Trump gets sedition charge and we can't write his name in. And all of you You'll liberals. Still vote. You're going to still vote for him, you, even if we he's are, convicted. Uh, we yeah, will. I, I will vote him. for him. I'm wanted. Yeah, I am. Vote for him. Abby, I'm wanted in four states. If he is convicted, thrown in jail, you'll still vote for him, right? I will. Yeah, yeah. even more so. If Trump is convicted okay. and put in jail, you're still going to vote for him. Well, first of all, he's not convicted until the Supreme Court convicts him. In America, that's not a conviction. We have an appeals process, which will take years. So by the time that happens, he'll be back in office and handle everything. No matter what the situation is, you'll... Well, Jesus was convicted as well. <laughs> Innocent man. Yeah. So just a conviction means nothing to us at all. You'll still vote for him no matter what. No matter what, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're trying to accuse Trump of everything. everything. Insurrection, sending fake electors to Michigan, Arizona, five other states. The, the Constitution demands it. Mishandling documents, stealing right. secret documents. You mean he had it the in re, his garage? The Georgia RICO, the Georgia's uh, RICO law. They went after right. Trump University. Oh yeah, they all loved him until he, they found out he loved America. They don't love America, they love their power. They love their system, their structure, their swamp. Nixon was a good boy because Nixon went home and shut up. If Donald Trump would have been a good boy, he wouldn't be here today. It's just the same thing that they did to Richard Nixon. Yep. Exactly. Famous for being innocent. But Nixon, I've watched CNN the other night when they admitted that the only reason Nixon did not get prosecuted after the fact yeah. because he, he, wasn't went running. Yeah. he went home. He shut up, no influence. Donald Trump loved America too much to shut up. You're still going to vote for him, even if he is convicted. If he if he is the Republican nominee, yes, sir, I will definitely vote for him. Now I won't vote for him even if he is convicted. You will. Oh yeah, absolutely. I will do a right in. You're still going to vote for Trump even if he is convicted. Of absolutely. It actually absolutely. makes me uh, want to uh, vote harder. They may continue to throw more indictments at him. Go for it. Trump is an innocent man, and uh, he will win again. Yeah, and you'll still vote for him even if he's convicted. Uh, if he's on the ballot, I'm voting for him. You're still going to vote for Trump even if he's convicted? Yeah, I think he'll still get a lot of votes if he's in jail anyway. Secret Service will have to come and take him out of jail and go bring him to the White House. America is a ship. It only rides in the water when it's balanced, just like any ship. Before Obama, America was in the middle. We all gravitated toward that center where the ship rode well. When Obama came and put gays in the military and transgenders in the bathroom, the ship goes like this, right? The only way to ride it, we had to find Donald Trump to bring it back over. You're talking about indoctrination. Sure. You know, there's a lot of indoctrination going on. I've said President I, Trump needs to change his slogan to mega, not mag. Make education great again. By getting rid of the Department of Education. Absolutely. Or and, critical race theory, all the uh, the books in these libraries that's destroying children's minds. I hear reports of parents now, they don't want to bring their kids to church until they're like 13 or 16, because they're like, oh, well, then, that, then they're old enough. Yeah, they're indoctrinated before that. So what's an appropriate age to bring your kid to church, in your opinion? The moment they're born. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was born in the church, actually. My mother had me in the church. Yeah. So I believe a child, my Lord, why wouldn't you bring a child to start grounding them in the moral laws of the Almighty God? And that'll, that'll get rid of this indoctrination. Absolutely, sir. But you see, that's the reason we started public schools. The reason public schools were started, you can go read the two reasons. Because at one time, all schools in America were religious, even our colleges, universities, Harvard, they were all religious. Public schools were started to break the stronghold of Christian doctrine over our children. Everyone in our church is homeschooled. Okay. Wow. We took back over our children. We took them away from the government schools. And that's a good way to get rid of the indoctrination. That's the only way that I know of. What other way is there? What are some ways to stop this indoctrination? I am for homeschooling now. 
I was not a big advocate for homeschooling. Homeschooling to stop this indoctrination. Stop the indoctrination, and I'm not even sure we should be sending them to college. I think we could go to technical schools, make sure that they go to uh, conservative uh, colleges, like, uh, where is the one? Liberty, the, uh, yeah. Baylor. There's another one, Heritage, I think. Teach the Constitution, teach about our founding fathers, teach real history, and yeah. instead of this indoctrination. And putting our students in debt. I mean, they're in debt. They they could buy a home with the money that they get out of school with debt, and they even if they get really good jobs, their debt, their debt to uh, income earned will not let them buy a house. So you're saying that we should make college free for all, or? Lower, lower the cost of college? I don't know what the answer is. I used to think it was, I love this lottery idea that uh, the people going to school that made good grades, but now that I'm seeing that happen, these universities are raising the cost of astronomically for these kids to go, and then these professors are paid all this money, and then, and then it just rolls upon itself. Then the government only hires like the lawyers and things like that out of these schools and they're indoctrinated at this point. I've been hearing parents talking about not bringing their kids to church until they're 13 or 16 and they're old enough to make a proper decision. No, that's not, I don't believe in that. No, that sounds like something like the mask mandates. Separate us, make us suspicious of each other. For the record, what's an appropriate age to bring your kid to church? Well, it, pa parents have to be involved with their church education as well as their school education. The national education needs to be disbanded. That's unconstitutional. We need to go to the states running their own education. But I think that that should be mandatory. And, and you mean, are you talking about like school choice or are you talking about? Well, we definitely need school choice, but I just don't think that we need a national education. We need to go to the states, need to decide what they do in their states regarding their education. Let the states decide. Let the states decide. The federal government cannot tell some little small community in North Georgia what is best for their students there. What do we do about this indoctrination? That's another problem. I think over the last several decades, our schools have been infiltrated by communists. I think homeschooling is an option or private schools. I see a lot of states um, passing uh, school reforms choice. to the education with school choice. Public school system is corrupt. It's run by powerful unions that fund the Democrat Party. Those aren't people that should be educating our, yeah. our children. Homeschooling, it's a good way to stop the indoctrination. Yeah. It's about the, that, that and, and, you know, if you can find a good private school. I'm hearing a lot of parents talking about how they're not going to bring their kid to church until the child is like 13 or 16. They want the kid to be old enough to make a proper decision. About going to church? About going to church. I think that's something you can pass down from parents to children, you know, if you're a Christian. As a Christian, what's an appropriate age to bring your child to church and have them read the Bible? Uh, as soon as they're born. I mean, well, I mean, they can't read when they're born, but a lot of baptisms happen at a very young age. What do we do about this indoctrination? I think you have to get rid of the Department of Education. We need to get the people that are indoctrinating our kids out of school. Who are those people? Teachers. Change what they teach to where it's not something that's crazy biased for the left. We need to teach history. We need to teach the facts, not an opinion. You teach the history, don't teach victimhood. You're local? My, yeah, I just moved to Georgia, yeah, Very like two cool. months ago. Oh wow, where did you move from? I lived in Florida. Okay. Yeah, nice. I had to leave because of uh, Ron DeSantis. <laughs> kind of messed up the state a little bit. Ron DeSantis messed up the state. Yeah. How did he mess up the state? Man, just everything got so expensive. Inflation went through the roof like it's four grand for a one bedroom. It's kind of wild, you know, so I moved there when COVID hit I grew up in LA um, and then COVID hit I moved to Florida. It was great, you know, during COVID for the first year or two and then Ever since he won re-election in 2022 in the midterms, he kind of just stepped aside from being governor and did well, like a knew, shadow well, campaign. My, my problem is that he knew he wasn't going to be around. He knew he was running for president when he ran for his second term. Yeah. He knew he wasn't going to be around to govern the state of Florida. I agree. I agree. And, and honestly, they asked him on the debate stage if he was running and he wouldn't answer. So yeah, you're not a fan of DeSantis? No. Yeah. He has establishment ties. Oh, Very hugely establ establishment ties. I mean, you could even see over the time, you know, he went from actually not supporting Trump to wanting Trump's endorsement really bad. 
and getting able to win. And over this whole time, you kind of realized he, he wouldn't have won. He wouldn't have won election. Exactly. And this whole time, you kind of realized, and a lot of us, because we were kind of, you know, we still didn't really see all that was happening, right? Up until until 2020, it's when a lot of people's eyes started to open. But you kind of realized from that time, 2018, up until then, he really hasn't had Trump's back. Right now. Rhino. Would you vote for him as, for governor again? I would never, ever support him. I supported him during midterms, supported him during his first thing. I had him on the side of my trailer, had a blown up, make America Florida, and then he switched on Donald Trump. I'm working on an app. This is an app to where um, if a white person says, oh, I have a black friend, if you're the black friend, you immediately get a note and okay. an update. Okay. And it says, like, all right, well, this black friend is, you know, this person just named you as a black <laughs> friend, okay. and their debate gives you their location. You can just show up and be like, listen, this is my coworker uh -huh. from, you know, a few years ago. We really haven't <laughs> spoken since. We follow each other on Facebook. Right. But yeah. I like it. I like it. Thank Where you. was it in the development? Um, it's in the early the, okay. no, the I like angel it. in the yeah, beta testing. Okay, no, uh, I will be. Able, I put me put me down as. Um, yeah, you have to like you have to register your black friends okay. as a white person. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few who I could who I could whose name I would want to register. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, no. Fantastic. Thank you.